Welcome, everybody. <laughs> I never know exactly when I'm live, so welcome, everybody. It is Monday, and that means it is a new cast on here at Wildflower. Well, you guys all voted for some really pretty hand-dyed yarn that I did on the weekend. I have to say I'm pretty impressed with my, with my dyeing efforts. So we will look at the yarn that you guys are voting for, plus a few more skeins that I dyed. We can talk about the Fiber Friends Dyeing Challenge. I can show you last week's new start and a couple of other projects that I'm working on. And I have new needles. Don't let me forget to show you these new needles and we can chat about those. So as always, let's talk about this week's vote. I picked in the very first two skeins of yarn that I dyed this weekend. For the voting. Look at those. I have to say I'm really quite impressed. This was, this yarn was dip dyed. So it was a little different process than I had done other times and I really really like how it turned out. So the yarn started out as Patton's Classic Wool. I don't think I have a skein here to show you because I think I rounded up all my balls and took them yeah yeah it's not the same i took them all downstairs to, to re-skein and and um get ready to dye so patents classic wool the closest to white is an erin color so it's more just a cream off-white color not a real white white color and it is in a ball a hundred gram ball so i had to use my swift find the end wrap it around the skein and then wind the skein to rescan it, tie it in three places, and then soak it and get ready to dye. So this is what it uh, turned out as. I bought hmm, about 12 different colors of Kool-Aid dye, and I've used almost all of them. I have two or three more skeins of yarn left to dye with my Kool-Aid, and then I think I will move on to something a little different. Um. So first skein, my first, my first go here. So I'm going to try to, I don't know. I know that I think it's a little, this way was always a little better for color. Hmm. This is looking a little too white. It's more of a really, it's a really pale, almost like, um, almost like a light green color, but tropical. No, no, no. Mixed berry. I always keep thinking it was Tropical Punch, but I started with Mixed Berry. I don't know if I can get, oh, there. That's a little bit better. A little bit better. So Mixed Berry. This was one package of the Mixed Berry. And there was quite a bit of dye in there. So we can talk about the dye process in a little bit. So this one was a, this one was a success. This one here, let me see. It's pretty close to the colors, kind of a yellowy, peachy, pinky color, which I actually really, really like. It's not usually my colors, but I really like this one. And this one here was strawberry, uh-oh, strawberry, I didn't write them both down. Um strawberry kiwi and peach mango that's what they were so that was really fun so these were the two that you were all voting for did you guys get your votes in today they i like them both and i really wasn't sure which ones you guys would be voting for and um i have to say there was one that was leading the way pretty much from the start and the one that was from behind slowly started to catch up. And it took me a while to um, tally all the votes because it was going back and forth for a while. But the one that was ahead at the beginning stayed ahead all the way through. So the winner for this week's, this week's cast on Mixed Berry. Or this yellowy pink there. That color is pretty accurate right there. The winner is, insert our little drum roll. 
And the winner of the yarn that's going to get reballed up and cast on is the yellow and pink. I am really, really happy with how this turned out. I would definitely play around trying to recreate this again. So, what is that's probably probably had it like this when I was dyeing it. So what I had, so here is the, the peach mango. So at the end, what I really wanted, I wish this color <laughs> was a little better on here. Sorry, you guys. But I think you can kind of see, obviously down here is a lot darker. And so I really tried when I was dip dyeing it to put the ends in and get a lot of the dye to soak in and then have it go lighter as I went up the skein. And then the other half of the skein dye again the end with um, a lot, lot more intensity, deeper, deeper colors. And then as I went up the skein, just to get it lighter and lighter. So the strawberry kiwi, this was both one package of each, the strawberry kiwi and the peach mango. A lot more dye in the peach mango. The strawberry kiwi was pretty, a pretty weak dye bath. One packet with half of the skein didn't even dye half the skein because you can see there's still some up here that's really, really light. So if I was to do this one again, I might actually use two, put two packages of the strawberry kiwi in to get a little brighter color and a little more coverage up here so it wasn't quite so light but that's okay I like this I'm still really really happy with this and can't wait to get this wound up into a cake and knit with this and I can't wait to use the blue either I'll open up the blue so you can see it they look so pretty skeined up don't they I think they could just be room decor just as they are right find a pretty bowl or a vase or something and just let them sit there and never ever to be knit so let's see so hi everybody i see a bunch of people here oh sally says she picked the blue oh susie did you pick the blue as well i know the blue was really pretty nikki yes nikki picked the blue i remember some people gave me some suggestions and I think it was Nikki said that the yellow and pink would make a good orange crush shawl, which it, which it absolutely would. I really like the blue too. Aren't those colors really fun? There was a lot of dye in this package and I was able to do the whole 100 gram ball or skein with just the one and not split it into two different colors. So I think this one's this one is going to knit up really nice too. So we'll see. I will. Uh, I think the next couple of weeks, the the voting is going to be on some dyed yarn. So this one, who knows? This one may come back around in the next few weeks. Oh, hey, Erica, how are you? What am I going to make? I think I'm going to do. I have this idea of just a short cowl scarf i think i'm going to knit it as a scarf but then put a button on it so it'll just come around and put a button or two on the side i think is what i'm going to do maybe with all of them or maybe some of them i'll do hats with but i'm kind of feeling a scarf kind of thing i'm just going to play with it i don't know exactly what it's going to turn out to be i have an idea in my head i'm almost thinking seed stitch too or moss stitch or a double seed stitch knit lengthwise because these I made these skeins as big as my swift would go for two reasons so I'd get a longer color repeat so I wanted to play with that so a nice long color repeat and I wanted the thickness of my skein to be not as thick so kind of thinner so it would not be a stick so it would soak up the dye faster. And let me tell you, these took the dye 
super, super quick, super, super quick, especially the ones where it was a weaker dye bath. So the strawberry kiwi, that soaked up every ounce of this color in like no more than a minute, 30 seconds, a minute, just a few dunks and the water was clear. So I have a few more skeins here to show you and every single one that I rinsed, not one drop of color rinsed out of any of them. The, um, so my process, I should talk about the process. So what I did, so I skeined up the yarn, I tied it in three places around. So try to keep the skeins from getting tangled. And I just used a big pot. Everything came right from my kitchen because it's Kool-Aid. There was no, you didn't need any, anything else for mordant for this to help set the dye because your Kool-Aid has your food coloring in it and it has your citric acid. The citric acid in the heat is what fixes the color to your wool. Has to be wool, has to be animal protein. So something, alpaca would work, cashmere, mohair, Angora, did I say that? You know, animal animal fiber. We talked a little bit last night on the Fiber Friends podcast about linen and cotton. And my some people said, said they wanted to try that. And my suggestion was try it and it might hold or some of the dye might hold there. But rule of thumb has to be animal fiber for Kool-Aid. So you've got your wool. It's it's tied, it's skeined, it's soaking. You can, you can dye it dry. But when it's wet, it helps open up the fibers and the dye absorbs more even. If it's dry and you put it in your dye bath, it'll absorb more randomly and it will take a little longer to soak in there, which is always a fun thing too. And I want to try that because I think it will give you a more gradient look to it, which I'm always excited to play around with. So anyway, so I soaked my yarn probably for at least half an hour just some tap water. I didn't put any soap in it. I didn't put any vinegar because you don't need it with Kool-Aid. Um, once it was soaking for about that half hour mark and it looked like it was getting wet all the way through, I had my big pot just pulled out of my kitchen cupboard. I, I just put about, I started out with eight cups. You don't need a whole lot. You just need enough in there that when you put your skein in, it's going to cover it all. And once it got up to just a simmer, just where you could see some like air bubbles, like popping, it was just looked like it was just going to boil. I, um, oh, Liz says she did it dry and it soaked up pretty evenly. Did it? Okay. See, everybody's going to have a little, um, different experience. So that would be, so you can do it both ways. Um, so yeah, so just as it's getting to a boil, you don't want to boil it. Then I took my wet skein. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Put my Kool Aid in first. So once it's up to temperature, I just sprinkled in my Kool Aid, gave it a couple of little stirs just to make sure it all dissolved, and it, it dissolved really, really easy. Sometimes the Wilton's cake icing dye, that pasty stuff, that can take a while to get that um, all dissolved. But the Kool Aid, it dissolved quick and easy. Once it's all dissolved, then you take your skein, wet or dry and pop it in your dye bath. And either you can submerge the whole thing if you're looking for just a solid. What I did was I just had my, my wet skein and I just dunked. You can see, definitely see on the blue here. I just put the end in and pulled it out and put it in, pulled it out. And then every once in a while, I would just put a little bit more in. So I wanted it to be dark and then gradually getting lighter as we went up this game and it turned out perfect. And I just kept doing that again for about a minute or so. And I had another spoon and I would just put a little bit of water on the spoon. It looked, and you could tell sometimes right at the very beginning, <clears throat> it had just a little bit of hint of blue in. And that's when I took the very last of my skein my original thought was I was going to save this and do a different color, but I still had a little bit of dye in the pot. So I just took this end and I just dunked it in. And 
then I just set my timer on my phone for six minutes and I just let it simmer away. I didn't, you don't want to stir it, but I didn't even flip it. I didn't do anything. And after six minutes, I just pulled it all out, let it cool, and then I rinsed it. And the dye pot was completely exhausted and not one little bit of dye came out of here. And that's what I did. And so that's what I just did. Basically that whole thing, that whole procedure with every skein. So I just kind of had an assembly line going. Well, one skein was soaking, the pot was warming up, and then I was re-skeining another skein. And then when the pot was, was warm, the Kool-Aid went in, the soap skein went in the pot, the skein that was on the Swift, I tied it in three places, put it into soak, and just kind of kept going. Um, and then I just put them over my, I hung them in the bathroom for um, a little while, just let them drip. I, I usually use a salad spinner and put the skein in, what, well, I don't know, you probably could do two skeins at a time. And with these, I would probably, I could put them in, I wouldn't, um, there was no dye coming out of them, so I wasn't worried at all about any dye transferring from one skein to another. But typically, I just put one skein in the salad spinner, give it a few spins, and it gets all that extra out, that extra water, and then I hang it to dry. But I didn't do that this time, because my salad spinner has been used for acidine. So, and I didn't want to contaminate anything. I didn't want to bring that up into the kitchen. So when I pulled it out of the, out of the water after I had rent, I just rinsed it in the kitchen sink. First time just with some um, water at about the same temperature as your yarn. So depending on how long you let this cool before you rinse it, if it's totally cool, rinse it with cool water. If it's still warm, rinse it with warm water. I just put it in the kitchen sink with just some, some plain water. Nothing came out of it. Then I put a little dish soap in and let it kind of swish around with that. And then I gave it one more rinse with just clear water again. And that was it. Just gave it a good kind of squeeze out, hung it in the bathroom, in, this, in, the, in the shower, and just let it drip dry. And then once all the dripping was done, then I put it on my clothes rack, my drying rack. And, uh, and actually put the fan on it a little bit and it dried overnight. And that was it. So it was a lot of fun. It was, I had a lot, a lot of fun. So much fun that I think I'm going to do a couple more skeins, maybe tonight, or maybe I will just re-skein a couple of skeins and then do a little bit more dyeing tomorrow. I have got, oh, the wine color that I'm really excited for is mango. It looks, it's, well, it's orange. And it, but it looked a little deeper than the actual orange Kool-Aid. So I'm really excited to see what shade it will come up with. Um, and I've got grape and I have got a couple of more, couple more that I can't remember now. I'm getting all these names of the Kool-Aid is uh, kind of getting all mixed up in my head what I have left, but I know I have pink lemonade left, but there's really almost no color in that. So I'm not even sure if I'm going to use it. What else? I might have hmm, pink lemonade. I don't think I've used pink lemonade. I think I must still have that one left too. So I have a few more skeins to play around with you guys. I can't wait. So these were the two. And I'm like super, super, super happy how, with how these turned out. It was kind of fun deciding which colors of Kool-Aid I was going to pair together. And it was, I thought about it a little bit. I put a little bit of thought into it, but not too, too much. And I was happy with how it came out. So this was skein number three. This one here was lemon lime, which was the only, well, one color I could not find again this year. Kool-Aid is hard to find here. There's a good shot of lemon lime. That nice, almost a neon green color. There's only one store that I know of in the city that sells Kool-Aid now. The last few years, it has not places don't sell it. They sell it, but in the little bottles, that's the liquid with the probably aspartame or whatever's in there, and you just add it to your water, right? They don't sell the, the powdered packages anymore. 
And, um, but one store has it. So I went down there and I picked up what they had, but they didn't have any green. There was no lemon lime. I found that in my stash of Kool-Aid. I had a few, few packages left over. So maybe if I looked a little harder, I might find some more. I'm not sure. But lemon lime and, oh, I already did use, this was the strawberry lemonade. So it turned out a really nice pinky shade too. It was nice. So I paired those two together and it does look, Cheryl looked at it last night on the podcast and she said it reminded her of watermelon and it kind of does. It's more, more of a pinky orangey pink, but it's really, it's really pretty too. So I, I think that'll knit up really fun too. So that was good. I would, I would do that color combination again as well. I've got two more I can show you, but these guys are wet because I did just rinse these tonight when I got, I dyed them last night and then I let them cool overnight. And so I just rinsed them tonight when I got home from work. So I'm going to hold these up. So I just grabbed a baking sheet from underneath the stove to put these on kind of to hold them after I've pulled them out of the dye pot. So these ones here are this one here. These ones are close in color. This is orange and cherry. Orange and cherry. There was a lot of dye. This was a really like a strong dye bath for sure. The cherry, I tried to do a gradient dyeing, trying to get the end darker. Okay, I'm dripping here. <laughs> so, um, and I guess when I'm looking at it in the, in the screen here in the monitor, I can see it does look, definitely looks lighter up here, but down below, I was really, I was trying for a more gradient down. I don't have another hand down kind of above where that blue tie is. I wanted that to be a little bit lighter than what was below, but there is so much dye food coloring in the pot that it was just soaking it all up it, and there was still lots left. So I didn't get as gradient as I did with the other dyes that were much lighter and not as much dye to soak up. And then the orange. So I did get a lighter orange up here and darker. So I think that is gonna be really fun. And this one here, now this is a color that I really liked. This is the Tropical Punch. So it's in a blue package and I knew there was one of these colors that you think it's blue because the package is blue. And then when you add water, it turns red. Tropical punch. That's the one. Um, so it came out almost like a cherry red color. And then I used pineapple and the pineapple actually smelled really good too. So that is this one. So look at that pineapple color. And I was able to get more of a gradient there at the bottom. It is darker. And then got a nice lighter yellow. But isn't that fantastic? I'm going to go back and buy more of this for sure for a yellow. And then that is the Tropical Punch. So definitely got a gradient there. And I think at the bottom, you can see that is lighter or, or sorry like really really dark down at the bottom and you can see it kind of get lighter as we go up which was exactly what I was looking for so those I need to let drip in the shower for a while now I think I have a purpose to go to you know Goodwill or a thrift store and see if I can find another salad spinner because I think now I want to have a salad spinner just for um, food grade dyeing, so for Kool Aid, <laughs> food coloring, and the cake icing dyes, and just have it labeled so then I can keep my other spinner just for acid dyes and um, not mix the two together. So, hi, Sabrina. Sabrina asked which one, which one won. So, yes, if anybody's coming in, it was the blue and it was the pink and the yellow. Pink and yellow was the winner this week. So this is the one that's going to get cast on into a scarf. 
Look at that yellow too. So that was the peach mango. It smelled really, really good too. It's probably the best smelling one, I think, of all of them. Oh, anyways, I know, I think I could just be a professional Kool-Aid dyer, you guys. <laughs> I am just having so much fun playing with these colors. I think I could just do it every weekend. So that was, so far, my dyeing. Five skeins. It seemed to, it, it did take a little while. It was a, wasn't a super, super quick process when you're just dyeing one skein at a time. Maybe if I could have, I guess, had two pots on the go, but I didn't bother. So anyways, it has been fun. It was a great weekend for sure. I um, had tons and tons of fun doing it. And I'm going to keep going because the Fiber Friends Dying Challenge is on for the whole month of July. Now, I'm sure some people are not going to get as carried away with it as I am. And you'll probably just pick one weekend or a Saturday, right? And dye a couple of skeins, one or two skeins for a project. If you want to dye two skeins for a shawl, we're doing a shawl and along the Orange Crush shawl pattern, which will be up and ready soon before August. And, but two skeins, two skeins of sock yarn, if that's something you're interested in. I'm, so I will probably dye some yarn for that as well. I'm going to do some acid dyeing later on. I'm going to look at the weather. If we're going to have some really hot days, I am going to do some solar dyeing. And I bought some RIT that is for synthetic dyes because I have some acrylic yarn that I thought I would try and dye too. So we'll see how much of it get, I get done. I've got... Um, all these grand plans, but I'm also going on vacation coming up soon. So I made you some yarn dyeing over the campfire just because I think it would be fun. I did it once before, so I think I will do that again. I have to figure out that'll probably be some more Kool-Aid or something too. Maybe food coloring again. I don't know. I have to have to think a little bit about that. Anyways, I'm just gonna look at some comments here and um Oh, Sally said you have some similar colored knit crate yarn. Oh, that's good. That makes me feel like I have almost replicated professional yarn dyers then. <laughs> Erica, yes, how's the move? Erica, you've been busy moving, haven't you? Sally, oh, you were thinking blue water at the beach. That sounds nice. Liz, you picked the blue. In fact, you liked it so much. I broke down and dyed some patterns. Croy, that color. Yay. Yes, because you were saying there was no dyeing for you. Oh, my gosh. That's fantastic. Oh, your friend at the strawberry. Oh, and your yarn is pink. Like the strawberry kiwi. Nice. Hi, Lynn. Nikki said, oh, both together would be nice in a brioche cowl. Yes, it would. It, that would. I mean, there's so many things. So many things you could do, right? Oh, herringbone. I love herringbone. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. And then I got to the comment where Liz says she did it dry. So there you go. If you're short of time. I think, you know, there's, oh, you know, I was going to say probably most ways will work, right? I mean, I guess if it doesn't, you'll know because the, the color will just rinse it. As long as the color holds when you rinse it, then... It should be successful. Oh, Lynn says, will the color stay as vibrant after several washings? You've only used acid dyes. Um, yeah, they do. I've done some hats. I've done mitts. And I've had them for numerous years. And, and they've looked fine. So they should. I mean, probably technically, if it, you had something. I always want to do this. I do a like a, a Kool-Aid and an acid dye and just like hang them in the window and see which one is more sun fast. I, I don't know. I would think probably the acid dye might be more sun fast and um, yeah. And same with washing, but somebody, uh, who was I chatting to? And they kind of said, Louise, well, why are you worrying about that? You know, you're dyeing yarn for hats and mitts. There's something you're going to wear. You're going to wear them for, you know, however many winters they're going to wear out. They're going to get lost. <laughs> you're going to get sick of them. You're going to re-knit it. You know, they don't have to last 20 years. Um, 
And I thought, yeah, that's a good way of looking at it, right? But, you know, my mitts, my mitts that I had, I, I dyed them. They were very much, they were probably exactly this cherry and orange. And I just threw them away this spring. I wore them part of this winter. And then I had worn a hole in the thumb just from wear, just from using them. Cause I, and I dyed those, I bet you 10 years ago. Um, I'm sure they were at least 10 years old and I, and I wore them every winter and they did not look faded at all. They looked just as good. It was just the wool was wearing. And so, and I thought I could have mended them, but I was like, yeah, I'll just die, die some more yarn and, and make more. Right. So yes, so that was a long winded answer to Lynn, but yeah, I think you should be fine. In my experience, it's, I've, I've never dyed anything with my Kool-Aid and, and then thought, oh, it looks like it's, um, yeah, like getting washed out or dull or something. But even if it did, then I guess you could just over dye it, right? If you wanted to. Sally said, oh, you've knit knit oh you have knit pick stroll yarn and it's already tied do you need to redo it probably if it's tied really tight you're going to want to make sure it's nice and loose i always make sure i just kind of when i tie mine just to make sure that all the yarn can kind of spread out almost not quite in a single layer but close if it's really tight, and I think most of the commercial ones that are tied on there might be too tight. I think I would I would take them off. Take a look at it and see how loose it is. But you really want to make sure that all the dye can get under there because you can do like a tie dyed effect where we've done that before with skeins where you on um, you purposely tie them tight every so often, put a, a string on them, and then you'll get a band of white where you've got green and where you've tied it and you take that tie off and you'll have a white strand and actually my mitten yarn I don't know if, you, if I'm at a spot where you can see it but this was the lichen and lace yarn that I bought this sport this rustic sport was it sport heather something like that these were 50 gram balls and when I cut the ties on this to skein it into or to put it into a cake, there was one spot on the whole skein where it was tied. It was tied too tight and there was a really light blue line on here. And every once in a while when I'm knitting with it, you, you can definitely see it. Definitely see it. It was like clear as a bell when I took the tie off it. But I'm hoping that, I don't know, I can't, I've just got this little bit. Oh, look at this. This is my mitt from a few weeks ago, if you didn't see it. <laughs> um, and I noticed as I was knitting with this and I came to it, I could see as I was knitting, you know, the yarn, pulling it out of the ball, I could see, I pull it out and be like, oh, yep, there's that dyed spot. But now that it's knit in, I can't say as I see it. So yeah, which I thought was a little, I don't know, I was not disappointed, maybe disappointed that this um, happened on like a commercial dyed yarn, because that shouldn't have happened. But anyways, that's that. So yeah, make sure they're not too, too tight. Um, let's see here. Pink lemonade would be nice base. Oh yes, Nikki. And then dye over it variegated or some speckles. Yes. Pink lemonade. It would. Yep. Yeah, Cause it's just, it was a week, a weaker dye bath. It would give you a nice base. Cherry looks like pumpkin. It does. It does. It's not, it does have like an orangey tinge to it. Doesn't it? Yes. Oh, the pineapple. I know the pineapple was a great yellow. And that is fairly new. I mean, I'm not a super like up on my, my Kool-Aid flavors, but yeah, some of these were new, right? I think in the last few years. Hi, Katie. Oh, lovely yarn dyeing. Thank you so much. How am I going to knit with all this dyeing? 
I don't know. Maybe I'll just have to stop buying. <laughs> don't, yeah, don't hold me to that. I don't know. I know. I just, maybe I will just knit with all this. Liz, you used orange dye to try. Oh. Oh, spots on your palm are still orange. Okay. Yes. Now, I didn't wear any gloves, but if you were going to have your hands in the dye pot, like if you're thinking you're going to like smoosh the yarn around or pick it up and, and turn around, yeah, put gloves on or you will turn your fingers red or orange or green. But I had mine, I, was, I just held it by the ties and I was just dipping it in and then I was kind of using the spoon to hold it too. So yeah, I got away without any dye on my fingers at all. Liz, don't worry. It'll wash off in a few washes. <laughs> Paula, how are you? Oh, Paula, you can't sleep. Well, then I'm glad you're joining us. Sue Ann, how are you? Um, oh, what? Sue Ellen. Okay, listen, did you guys read this? She says, hi, Louise. Try dyeing with pine needles when you're camping. It's supposed to turn out a warm yellow. Birch bark is also fun to try. Oh, my God. Natural dyes. Sue Ellen. You have just opened a door here. I love natural dyeing. I um okay, pine needles. My first thought with pine needles is okay, you have to be super careful with those that they do not catch on fire <laughs> because they'll be so dry, especially here. You know, I would almost even wonder if we could even have a fire ban because unless we get some rain, it is looking really dark out there now. And we're supposed to have some thunderstorms roll through tonight, but it is so dry. But pine needles. Okay, I have not used pine needles before. I've done a bunch of other things. I, I would love to try that. Okay, turn out a warm yellow. Most natural dyes turn out kind of a yellowy, beigey color. But I would be up for that. Birch bark. If I could find some lying on the ground, which is always possible. Okay, I may have to research those a little bit. That is fun. Thank you for those suggestions. I, I think I, I know I am. I have got some pots here that I will take up that I can use on the campfire. Um, oh, Liz, you said orange Kool-Aid. Did I? Okay, orange. Oh, yes, orange Kool-Aid on your fingers. Is that what you were saying? Yes. That's okay. It'll come off. How is Daisy handing all the yummy fragrances? You know what? I don't even think she really is even batting an eye about it. I like the house definitely smelled like Kool Aid last night for sure. It did, but that was okay. Pine needles over a campfire, so you would have to like make your dye bath with the pine needles. So either put them in. Oh, like what? Like a cheesecloth bag? Like you would have to put them in something and soak them to get the color out of it. Or just put them in the pot, boil them for, I don't know how, like hours probably. And then strain the needles out and then put your yarn in. Hmm, that could be a fun little, little project, couldn't it? Okay, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see how, what I... A, how many I find and uh yeah how, how much time I've got to die up there so anyways okay yarn dyeing lots of fun if you haven't tried it before I would kind of suggest trying it see if you can find a skein of wool somewhere get one or two colors of kool-aid and you can do it right in your kitchen. So it's really super, super handy. And um, and, it, and this doesn't take too long. And then you've got a skein of yarn that you can make a hat. You can make mitts. You can do a cowl with. Lots of fun. Lots of fun. So my dyeing is going to continue over the next few weeks. So I will have more and more and more to show you. Um, okay. As for actual knitting, what have I done? I have done... Probably nothing near as exciting as the yarn dyeing, but I just have a few little updates on projects. 
I worked on my lace shawl. The ball is starting to get squishy. See, it's, there is like a hole in here. The center is starting to get um, empty. Empty, is that what I want to say? And I'm kind of torn because I keep wanting to look at the ball and I'm wanting to see, you know, that this is getting empty and I'm using up the yarn. But on the other hand, I'm like, I don't want to use it up too fast because I want this shawl to be as big as it possibly can. So one of those things. And I think I might actually have to see about actually getting a longer needle because this one here is pretty short and it's starting to get really really bunched up on there and I would not be a happy knitter if I pulled this out of my project bag at one point and a bunch of stitches had slid off the needle. I mean it wouldn't be the end of the world but it would just be something I would like to avoid having to pick up stitches with all these yarn overs and knit twos together and everything. But if you missed this the little chat about this last week I pulled it all out and re-knit it last week. Or I guess two weeks ago, not this past week. So I've got all my my yarn overs are all stacking on top of one another. I've got it all all going the way I liked it before this down here part was kind of a mishmash because my eyelets were offset, and then I decided I didn't like that. So I pulled it all out and re-knit it, which did take me a lot longer than uh, I guess I kind of. <laughs> Didn't realize how many hours I'd actually already knit on it. And maybe that was a good thing because maybe if I had really realized that, maybe it would have stopped me from pulling it out. And I'm glad I pulled it out because I'm much happier. And the yarn is absolutely beautiful. This is the hand dyed yarn, merino, superwash merino, and the faux cashmere. Super, super soft. Really, really nice. And I think I'm doing this. I think it's a five millimeter needles, five or 5.5 millimeter. And it's a thick and thin yarn. So there are, there you go. So there's, there's a little thin section. There's a thick section. And anyways, it is fun to be playing around and knitting this. I really, really like it. And I'm not even, typically I'd be fine with this project just carrying on forever and ever. Just keep knitting it because I do truly just like knitting it. But I want to wear it. So I do want it to get finished. Oh, Katie's asking, do, oh, do you ever, have you used a double boiler? Um, you know, I have not, I don't think I have ever used a double boiler. I have used a big pot and I put a steamer in the bottom, had a little bit of water with the steamer and then wrapped my skein. So not like this, but taken my skein, laid it all out like this. So I had a big long piece of saran wrap, laid this on top, folded it over, folded the ends over. So it was all like a big, big long tube all wrapped in, in um, saran wrap and then rolled it up like this, kind of like you're rolling up a sleeping bag. So then you get, so you're wrapping this, so it's already in, in saran wrap, and then you wrap the saran wrap, and then you try, as you're, as you're trying to wrap it, sometimes the saran wrap likes to pop open, but you try to keep the saran wrap all closed around it, so all the excess dye stays in your skein and doesn't leak out into the dye pot. So then you end up with something like this, all wrapped up in uh, saran wrap, and let's put it on your steamer. And that works really well too. You can absolutely can microwave it. Katie said she's, um, you've only done one dye session in the microwave. And yes, you can absolutely dye it in the microwave. Lots, I, that's where I've done 90% of my dyeing is in the microwave. So with Kool-Aid, you could just, you know, grab again your kitchen dish, um, casserole dish, a 9 by 13 pan, an 8 by 8 pan, a round casserole. I mean, whatever you've got that's microwavable put water in it enough for your skein to pop in there. Um, lots of times then that's when I'm doing solid. So then I will just put in um, my whatever, one or two packages of Kool-Aid, put my pre-soaked yarn in there, and then I microwave it for two minutes. And then I take it out and let it sit for two minutes. 
And typically this time I've got two casserole dishes on the go. So one goes in the microwave for two minutes. It comes out, I set it aside to cool for two minutes. I take another one that I'm going to dye, put it in the microwave, cook it for two minutes, and then I just keep alternating them. For I typically do at six minutes, six, eight minutes. Well, you just want them to get hot. You don't want it to boil, but you want it to get hot. And it won't boil in the microwave if you're just doing it two minutes on and off. And it works good. And then you just check, make sure all the dye, your water's cleared, all your dye is absorbed into the yarn. And you're good to go. I know, it's so much fun. Okay, I need to stop talking about it, don't I? Um, <laughs> anyway, so this. This. Coming along great. It is definitely going with me when I'm on vacation. I have this dream that I'm going to wear it on the beach. I don't know, though. I still have a lot of knitting to do. Kind of doubt it'll be finished. But I don't know. I'm just going to keep plugging away. My other project is the orange crush shawl. So this is going to be the pattern for the Fiber Friends Knit Along in August. So the pattern is written up. I just need some, just need to finish it up really. But the pattern is done. A couple people have test knit it and I'm test and I'm testing it. I'm re-knitting it again. I've knitted already once before. And this one here is about half done. It's a long, skinny boomerang type shawl. It's really, I think it's really fun to knit. It's a four row pattern, pretty easy. That's the stitch pattern. Just nice texture, a little bit almost lacy, but it's not a lace pattern. So that's what I've got done on this one. And again, I have a 16 inch needle. I have all these little short needles. I'm gonna to have to find a larger needle for this too because this one here is now getting to that point where the rows are starting to get a little bit longer. So I'm gonna find a larger needle for that. But this one here, I like the, how this yarn is knitting up. This is a Mary Maxim sock yarn, puddle jumper. I like it, I like it a lot. This is another one of those that has been in my stash for such a long time. And I think if I'd known how much I loved it, I would not have let it sit in my stash for so many years. I, I should have knitted up sooner, but I didn't. So anyways, that is that. So those two shawls have been what I've been working on. Last week's new start is sitting here. Barely started, you guys. Like hardly at all. I was thinking about this today and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm like going to be so embarrassed to show this, but you know what, this is real life knitting. This is, this is what I do. I had, you know, this crazy thought that I should get up at five o'clock in the morning and actually knit on this. And I'm like, yeah, no, <laughs> I quickly thought that thought. And I was like, you know, this is just, this is, it is what it is. And this is what you guys are going to see. And so I did enough of this little gauge swatch to know I need a bigger needle. And that's as far as I got with it. So I am, that was one of my jobs for tonight was to find another needle size. Something again, probably around a five millimeter, I think, because I want it to be nice and open and drapey. And this was that um, spring. This is Colorway Spring in that color burst yarn from Universal. So this is going to be another shawl. I'm going to have such a wonderful selection of summer shawls just in time for fall. So maybe I, I, I keep saying summer shawls because I know the colors are all reminding me of summertime, but they'll, they will work just as fine in the fall when they're actually done. Um, yeah, Liz is saying no, 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 no knitting at 5 a.m. I know that was like, that was a crazy thought. I was like, no, not doing that. Sorry, guys. <laughs> no. Not getting up super early um, just so I could have something. And how much more, how much more would I truly have done to show you? Not very much, right? So maybe, maybe next week we will see. So what, oh my gosh, knitting needles. This is what I have to chat to you guys about. This is what we will end up our hour on. Um, my other project in Cheryl's. Cheryl's divided sock bag or, or shawl bag has got a little mishmash of everything. 
I did take the creamer out of it. If you guys were watching us live last night or what went back and watched the replay on the Fiber Friends Challenge, I had a creamer. I had a crystal creamer in here last night because because I did because my aunt gave one to me when we were out yesterday and I didn't have any place to put it where it wouldn't break other than in my knitting bag <laughs> so these shawl bags hold a lot okay so my sock my rainbow sock is all ready for a heel flop I don't think I've no I haven't started the heel flop I think I'm ready to start the heel flop and these were the ones that I was knitting on the flexi flips Okay, so remember that we were having this whole conversation around who liked flexi flips and who did not like them. And like we know, because we've chatted about this a few times, right, that um, people either love them or hate them. And most people seem to hate them, <laughs> which I don't really know why, because I actually quite like knitting on them now that I kind of found how to how to hold them. They were just a little fiddly. And I've talked with a couple people, and I think maybe why people don't like them is maybe just because they're confused on how to hold them, like how to knit with them. Because I was at first thinking that they were actually going to be like a nine inch circular and we're going to be round. You were like literally going to be knitting around, like you would on a circular needle, and you don't. You knit on them like they're a magic loop. So you've got the two needles. Your knitting's flat, and that's how you knit with them, as opposed to your knitting being like that. So that I wonder if that's part of the reason, is that some people just, it was confusing, because I was confused when I first started using them. But anyways, I like them now. I really like them, and I will definitely use these again. And Karen sent these to me, and I absolutely love them, Karen. So Karen hated them. So the poor needles... Were, came from they yeah, they were not loved in their previous home but I love them so I think it, it worked out well then we got talking about Addy flips long or Addy squares or something somehow how did I somebody sent me a link somebody had left a comment and said that they did not like the regular Addies the Addy flexi flips but then they tried these long ones and it was a total game changer for them so I, I immediately had to have a pair a set Liz loves her flexi flips yay um so Suzanne at Knit Stitch ordered me in a pair a set and so I said that they're long and I, I sent her the link and so she ordered something so I wasn't really even sure what I was getting because I had never seen them before her <laughs> and anyway she ordered them and I went and I picked them up and I haven't used them yet but this is what she, this is what they are they're long and they're expensive they're expensive okay I might as well just, I was like debating. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't. I was like thinking, I can't even admit how much I paid for these needles, but you might as well know if you're going to order them or not. They're expensive. Is that, is that backwards? Maybe back, backwards would be better. $42, you guys. So I better like them. Anyways. Look how long they are. <laughs> Look how long they are. They come in a really cool tube, though. That's got to be worth, what, $5? So, three needles again. I don't know. Maybe the tube just makes them look a whole lot longer. But I don't know what I was expecting for long needles. I don't know as I was expecting this long. So, here is the original one and there so that's about center of the cable so I don't know what's that like a inch and a half longer on each end maybe okay maybe they're not that bad I was thinking they were like super humongous big long needles but maybe they're not quite so bad 
now that they're out of the tube, they, I think they don't look as big, right? I know, Sally, hope, hope you like them. I think I will. I, I will. I want to like them. And they're really, they're, um, I want to say ribbed. I don't know if, so can you guys see? Like every, like, it looks like they're notched every so far. And they're supposed to be square. Yeah. I guess they are square. Yeah, they're they're really interesting. So they are they're square with those little bumps on them. Textured, yes. So like you can I don't know, is that to hold on to your stitches? I I'm thinking so they don't fall off. I don't know. So yeah, Nikki says, yes, it looks ribbed or something. It does. And it really looks like it really close is it. Like, can you see them? They just look like little bumps on there. I don't know. So now I know Very Pink Knits has a tutorial. And I know Susanna Knitstitch told me she had seen the tutorial. She watched the video. And um, Very Pink Knits Lady. Oh my gosh, what is her name? She she um she loved these apparently. So um oh yes, square. It they're square. So they're square, they're ribbed, they're textured, they're long, they're gonna be fantastic. So my even heel, oh no, I thought I had it sitting here. This is the other part ball. This yarn here, the sock yarn, this is what I cast on Nikki's Even Heel Sock with. And it's on that, that silly little flimsy, soft, nine-inch circular needle that I do not like, unfortunately. So, Stacy, that's it. Thank you, guys. Stacy from Very Pink Knits. Yes. So, I'm going to go find this sock. And I'm going to transfer it onto these guys, these long needles. I'm going to knit with them a little bit, see what I think. Then I'm going to go back and watch Very Pink Knits, her review on them, and see what her thoughts are compared to what my thoughts are. And I think, Liz, you had left me a message a few videos ago about these needles, but you said, don't read this comment until after I've I've tried my needles. So I, I haven't read your comment. I got that far and I stopped reading. So I'm going to play around with these. I don't know. I really, really hope I like them. I don't know. I just think they're really fun. Really fun. So maybe I will try and work on my sock this week so we can come back and we can chat about these long squared Flexi flips. I would like to know if anybody else has tried these or would you want to try them? I don't know. I would like to know. I would like to know. So that was my excitement is getting new needles, yarn dyeing. It has been just a fantastic week and it's Monday again. So we're started on a brand new week. So it is just going to be a fun week. It's the fun is just going to carry over because I'm going to keep dyeing some yarn. So I haven't totally decided if I'm going to dye some yet tonight or not, or maybe I should knit. I don't know. Too many things, not enough time. Perfect example of that. Hi, Donna. Oh, Donna. Yes, Donna knew it was Stacy too. I know. I just had like one of those moments. I just like totally, I can picture her. I can see her, but I just lost her name. Okay, Liz, you would like to know how they work for sleeves. Yeah, see, I would think they would work great. and. After I like immediately rushed out and ordered a pair of these, I got thinking afterwards. I thought, huh, I wonder if they're like the length is really more for larger garments, like pot, like a sleeve, as opposed to a sock. Right? And I got these, these are sock size, they're 2.25. And then I got thinking, I thought, ooh, maybe I shouldn't have got such a small needle size. Maybe I should have gotten more like a four and a half or a five or a five and a half for doing like hats in the round. Because you've got the length, so you could have more stitches on there. 
Anyways, I don't know. I guess if I really like them, I can always order them in a larger size for, for worsted weight yarn. But these, I'm going to have long needles for my socks. I'm going to try it out, and I will report back next week. <laughs> So what else? Let's chat. We're just like we're at the one hour mark, but let's just chat for another couple of minutes. What are you guys working on? Is anybody dying yarn? Are anybody close to a finish? I am not close to a finish on like anything. Let's be honest. I am about halfway on a lot of things. So I feel like my slump of not having finishes is almost over because like these shawls, once I keep knitting on them for a couple of more weeks, I'm going to have a couple of shawls finished. I've got a pair of shorty socks that I'm working on and they're shorty. So just a little more knitting and they'll be done. So I'm going to get some finishes here soon, soon. Probably not next week, but coming up soon, which will help me out here because I think last week on my whiteboard, I was kind of sitting right at 50%. And now that I've got a new start, I'm under, I've got more starts than finishes, which I did not want to have happen. But I'm not too worried because I will get some finishes or maybe I just need to start a couple dish class. <laughs> <laughs> it does feel like a little bit of cheating, but not really, right? Because a finish is a finish. I may have to do that to tip the scale back in my favor. <laughs> oh, Liz said, for your fingering weight sweater. Yes. Oh, yes. I could do that. Yes, absolutely. Nikki, you got, oh, you fiber order. That's exciting. Some more spinning in your future. Fantastic. Susanna, you, oh, you finished a market bag. You started it last week and finished. I like that. That's good. So now are, are you going to use it, Susanna? Like, will you be taking it to the grocery store this week? Or is it a gift for somebody? Liz, time for ice cream. It is always ice cream time. To heck with more knitting tonight. <laughs> you know what? I would say I could be talked into that. Knitting or ice cream, that would be a that would be a tough, a tough call for sure. Because it is completely ice cream season right now. Oh, Lynn, that is a really, really good question. Suzanne and I at Knit Stitch were debating this too, because that's what I said to her. I mean, my question more was, yes, what? why would you want to use these over, um, yeah, like a nine inch circular needle or DPNs? I mean, I could see nine inch circular because that's, that's there again. Some people can't use it because it just bothers the wrist too much. And, and it's just, they're too tiny and it just doesn't work for them. So I can see nine inch circulars are kind of hit and miss for people. But DPNs, I mean, because if you don't like DPNs, then you're not really going to like this either because you still have multiple needles that aren't attached. You can drop your working one. You still have the potential for ladders but even if you do magic loop you still have the you know option of two potential of two ladders so I that I don't really know Lynn I'm asking the same question too I just bought them because I don't know I thought they were fun and I wanted something fun and like they just look so strange I don't know. I does anybody know? I honestly, Lynn, I don't know why you would want to do this over DPNs. I mean, in this case, they're long, but I mean, I think I've got some really long, like some old, old DPNs that are probably this long, and I never use them because they're this long and they get in the way. So I don't know. Hopefully somebody out there can let us know if they, if, yeah, why they like them better. I'm not sure. I mean, the tips, the tips definitely look pointy on these. This one is, this one is, are these, 
Okay, I'm looking at these tips now. Is there a blunt in a, I think maybe. I think maybe this one is, is a blunt end and this is a pointy end. But uh, this, this blunt end looks fairly pointy too. I don't know. I will just have to knit with them and see. I want how I like the length. That's what I want to see. If there'll be two in the way for socks, we'll see. I'm excited though. Okay, let's see. What else? Susanna. Oh, oh, what you, oh, yes. Oh, so the market bag, you're going to be testing it. So, okay. And then if you like it, we'll be making more. Yeah, Nikki, I saw that you guys were sick. So are you are you feeling better? You've been sick and you haven't been doing too much. Yes. Well, you just got to rest, right? Especially when you've got kids that are not feeling well too, right? That's when you and the kids are not feeling well, it makes it hard. Yeah, you did cast on a find your fade. That is a fun pattern. Liz, you used to be a DPN lover. You tried the flexi flips. I, however, do not like magic loop. Okay. So, okay, so Liz, you, I now tend to drop DPNs due to arthritis, but you don't drop the flexi flips. Okay, so, well, that's interesting. Okay, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter why, it's just as long as you don't. So is it just because they're flexible? It, does that make more ease of handling? I don't know, I just like playing with them, you guys. They could be... Like one of those um, stress ball kind of things, right? Like, or like a fidget spinner or something. <laughs> I just find them fun to play with. Susanna, probably because it's strong enough to hold. Oh, 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 this is your market bag. Okay, so you said, so I asked <laughs> if you would make more of them. And you said probably because it's strong enough to hold a four liter bag of milk jug or bags. Well, that's good. Oh, fantastic. All right. Well, all right, guys, this is going to be a fun knitting week for me because I really hope that this yarn dies up or knits up as nice as it looks in the skein because I really like how it looks when it's all skeined up and we all know Variegated yarn sometimes, it, you know, the knitting of it doesn't always, it kind of pools and does whatever. So I may try some different things. Okay, this is not the one I'm knitting this week. This is just a kind of watermelony, doesn't it? I like that one. This one. This is the one. So anybody's just popped in here at the end, this is the one that's getting cast on. Peach mango, strawberry kiwi. Got all these <laughs> Kool-Aid colors. I gotta keep straight straight in my head. Which which one is which? So this is the one that's getting cast on. I had thought once about knitting it diagonally. I like Nikki's idea of herringbone. There's a few different herringbone. You can knit herringbone a couple of different ways. And I love herringbone. It's uh I have a shawl pattern done in herringbone and I love it. So I may play around because I want this to knit up nice, but I have in my head double moss stitch. So we'll see. This may take a few tries, cast on, pull out, retry um, number of stitches to cast on, maybe different stitch pattern, but I will keep you updated. And I know I should not even say this. You guys know it's what I'm going to say, right? I would love to have this finished. It's only one skein, 100 grams. I could get this done this week. I really want to have it finished. Come back next Monday and we'll find out. I wouldn't place money on it, though. <laughs> Anyways, that is it, guys. We are, oh, yes, we're 10 minutes over. All right, we better wrap up so um, everybody can get on with their night. But Thank you guys so much. I know I say this every Monday. This is like the highlight of my Monday. It is a great way to start off a brand new week talking with knitting with all of you. Thank you so much for voting because it truly does um, 
brighten my day while I'm at work on Monday. Every once in a while, I'll go over to Instagram or check Facebook comments and just see like, ooh, which one's which one is in the lead? So it just is a little bit of extra fun on a Monday for sure. So everybody, happy knitting, happy casting on, happy finishing, happy midway through your project. Just find lots of joy in whatever you're knitting and dyeing this week. And I will see you guys all again next Monday. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.